Hello everyone and welcome back to the EGFH Season 1 Week 1 in Rocket League. Immediately there's a goal from the side of the Panthers. That's fantastic. As I was going to say, this you if you missed it, the Woodstock Academy Centaurs took the victory against the very team that just scored earlier. But due to a snow day, the Manchester High School wasn't able to participate this week. So we're going into the alt rotation of the games and we're going to be watching Notre Dame Green Knights versus Kanatech Panthers. My name is Navik and... Again, that was a, an amazing start coming out for the Panthers. I was saying last game that I wanted to see more teamwork coming out from them, a bit more aggression, and we're going to see a second goal coming from young, uh, young Barcode. It didn't take long for this team now to kind of get their bearings together. They lost one game, and they're not going down fight without a fight the second game. Absolutely fantastic show. Now that all of that chaos has kind of calmed down, of course, on the right... Oh, sorry, on the left side, we have the Notre Dame Green Knights. On the right side, we have the Panthers and it just I am astounded by what the Panthers have managed to pull off almost instantly con considering their last play time they clearly between matches here had a bit of a talk with each other and got a third point from Scorched Blaze it's like a whole different team this is good this is good that was very high energy so Let's take a look at the teams. We have that one guy, Hunts24, and Untitled on the side of the Green Knights. With, of course, Scorch Blaze, Young Barcode, and Eclipse on the side of the Panthers. Hunts and Untitled here playing kind of side by side. Wow, so that one guy playing on their defense. And, of course, we saw that Young Barcode was the defense player for the Panthers. And the game just seems to have slowed down. We're going to see it pick up almost immediately as the goal gets towards the side of the Green Knights here. And it's interesting, that positioning on the side of the Panthers is different from that last round in the sense that they're playing a lot more grouped up than they were before and splitting up in other situations. They've kind of flipped on their head, which is exactly what we wanted to see. With the, now the ball getting run up onto the side of the Green Knight, Yumbarko going for that shot there, but he doesn't manage to get it hit and get a bit too far to the left with that one guy pushing forward. And my Rocket League freezing. There we go. A bit of a technical difficulty there. I'm back. Scorch. All right. So the ball now being in that center field. Scorch Blaze pushing in in a 1v3 situation with Young Barcode following up behind him. Looking for that shot. He does manage to get it. But it's a nice save coming out from Hunts there. All on the ground. We're not seeing as much aerial play coming out from either team. And just as I say that, it looks like Hunts might be able to get a score here. And that is going to get to a 1-3 for the Panthers. Still up two. So... It, it's still completely recoverable, and I think this is going to be a lot closer of a game. What I would like to be seeing from either team is, as we were seeing with the Centaurs, they were setting up on these kickoffs a lot more. There was a lot more coordination going on with some fadeaways and things, and on the side of the Green Knights, we see that one guy in Untitled running into each other and actually managing to completely lose the ball for a second there, but it doesn't matter because they managed to recover with a, that one guy scoring the goal. We were pretty sure that he was on defense earlier as we were watching him play, but he seems to have switched with Hunters as they push up. And that might be beneficial for the team as there's three minutes left on the clock and they're only one goal behind now from that explosive start coming out from the Panthers. They had the momentum, but they seem to be losing it, and that's that's not looking too good with them, with Untitled now pushing up, trying to get behind the rest of them, looking for that boost, trying to deny it to the best of his ability. Oh, the ball running down now. That one guy managing to kick it on into the midfield, going up into that top left corner. Are they going to be able to capitalize on it? We aren't going to be able to see it just yet. Eclipse trying for something, but not managing to find it. There we go. Hunter's now setting up, but nobody's there to follow unless Untitled has the boost, but it doesn't matter because Young Barcode, of course, playing that goalkeeper role is going to be able to try and clear it as best as he can, but the fucker... Clips managing to pick that up there, and it's not looking good, but the recover comes up from Untitled, and... It's just very back and forth right now. There's a lot of back and forth going on, but a shot does come out from Young Barcode hitting that crossbar with Scorch managing on the follow-up. But of course, the goal doesn't go in there. Ball does not hit the net. And... My Rocket League crashing again. 
it's odd that I'm having some technical issues now when I wasn't earlier, but that's absolutely fine because nobody is there for the goal. Young Gar Parker going for the shot. It goes way off to the right. Hunt is now trying to clear it, but he almost set it up for his team. Thankfully, Untitled pushing it away. That was, that was a bit of a, a close call there with Eclipse. They're just on it right now. They are playing aggressively and they're playing, I, I hope, to the best of their ability. Their first game jitters seeming to have worn off a little bit there, which is good for the side of the Panthers. Oh, the ball getting there, but yeah, Young Barcode managing to kick it off in to the side of the Green Knights. And again, a minute left on the clock. It's anybody's game right now. It, the Green Knights could easily take this back and bring it into overtime. But Scorch Blaze is running it down the field. He manages to get past the offense, the front line there from the Green Knights, setting it up for the shot. But Eclipse isn't going to be able to get it because that one guy pushing it back up. And he's going to try and clear it, but he's not going to be able to. Hunter's now... Look, I thought he was going to go for the aerial there, but they waited for Untitled to pick it up. And that doesn't matter because it set it up for Young Barcode to get that first goal. And bringing it again to... I want to say that was Young... Yeah, that is... Yeah. So that was Young Barcode's second goal, I just stand corrected. And we're going to see that score separate with the last 30 seconds of this first round. Once again, this is a best of five series. And... It, so again, anything could happen. This is much closer than the last set. And that's what we like to see. Some close games. Well, we're not really sure what's going to happen. Oh, that one guy managing to weave it around the clip. Scorch Blaze looking to defend it. Young Barco going for it, but it doesn't matter because Hunts manages to get it just around them. That one guy trying to set up for whatever he can find. He could bring it to, again, 10 or 11 seconds left on the clock. We could see a goal going on in these 10 seconds. And again, that would bring it to overtime. So... I the thing about Rocket League is that it's not until you hear that buzzer that the game's over because the game doesn't end until the ball touches the ground. And here we have the countdown starting and they're going to be trying as they're going to be playing as aggressive as they can. It doesn't matter if they get, if they lose a goal here because if they don't get one, they lose anyway. One second left on the clock here. We're going to see that feature of saying where if the ball doesn't touch the ground, the round doesn't end. But the first round is going to go to the KT Panthers. Yeah, that was that was a rather interesting game. At the start, we saw the KT Panthers with this explosive three goals within the first 40 seconds. They were just going shot after shot and getting it in after in. And then the Green Knights kind of went there and stood their ground and managed to almost catch up, bringing it to a one-point difference. And we're going to take a quick break as we get into the next game. into the second match here once again the same map and the same teams of the notre dame green knights against the uh kane attack panthers and i wonder if we're going to see an explosive start as we did earlier with scorch blaze looking for that aerial to be set up by eclipse but one of the pods fails and the linchpin, the linchpin of the operation goes and it doesn't matter because the side of the Green Knights are not going to be able to defend this as well as I'd like, but it's okay because Hunt proves me wrong as soon as I say it. Caster's Curse. And Young Barcode trying to... I, I'm seeing more communication coming out from the Panthers, which is absolutely fantastic, as this might be the first goal of this set. No, Untitled managing to push Young Barcode away, so he wasn't able to reverse into it and chip it back up for Eclipse to capitalize on. But that might not matter as nobody's defending the goal with Eclipse going for that aerial shot and he does manage to score, bringing it at one point within the first 30-ish seconds of the round. 
And that was a lovely goal there. He managed to slide past all of the defenses on the side of the Green Knights. And just, it was an empty goal. And again, with the kickoff there, the Green Knights managed to find the ball first. And it is set up into the air. But is anybody going to try and go for it? It doesn't look for it as Eclipse and Young Barcode managing to get it away from the rest of the team. They're going to try and run it down to the field. We're going to see them trying to set up Young Barcode, staying back, looking to get those aerial picks and in just score as much as he can. The ball going straight down the middle here with Scorch being stopped by that one guy. But it doesn't matter unless Hunt is going to be able to defend it. The chip comes over and Scorch manages to get another goal. And that we're going to see, uh, and that was, I mean, they're just, they're, again, they're coming in with these explosive starts, but I want to see it throughout the game. And again, with the kickoff, the ball going extremely high, and Young Barcode is going to chase it into the 1v2. Both Scorched and Eclipse right behind him with the setup. Eclipse sees it, but he decides against actually trying to chase it, maybe because of a lack of boost or maybe because of a lack of confidence. We're not sure, but... What we are definitely sure for is that the ball is now on the side of the Green Knights. Once again, that one guy not going to try and contest that as he knew it was going over his head. And if he did, he might have set up a goal there, which would have set them another deficit down in this uh, in this point score. Scorch Blaze trying again to go for these strange... I'm going to try and outmaneuver everybody whilst also scoring the ball. And it's worked out for him twice so far. So, I mean, if it's working, don't fix it. Young Barcode going for the contest. He does manage to knock it up into the air just enough so Untitled isn't going to be able to get a goal here with Scorch Blaze going for the aerial pass, but he misses the ball. And we're just... It's interesting. It's, it is very interesting seeing how the Panthers have... I want to say developed over the course of these last two games. Their, their teamwork and coordination seems to shine a lot more in this game than the one against the Woodstock Academy's Centaurs. Again, we're going to see the ball, it, oddly enough, staying fairly center. It's it's a very much so a back and forth, which is definitely a good thing because we're not seeing something too one-sided. Young Barcode now going for that aerial. We see Eclipse pushing up down into the middle lane where Scorch Blaze goes for the pass. Young Barcode staying on that corner, going to pass it, but he does get knocked off by that one guy. They're not going to be able to find it with Hunt going up into the air, also trying to deny it. And Eclipse just kind of sat there waiting for his team to pass, but it's not going to be able to because the Green Knight's managing to shut it down. Oh. Here we go with the aerial against Scorch Blaze in this situation, and he does manage to score it from help from that one guy. I am curious to see on the replay here if the ball would have went in without being touched by the side of the Green Knights. It, it would have. Unfortunately, it wasn't. That one guy didn't even touch it. It hit the top of the crossbar and just went in. So that is unfortunate. Again, with the, the three-point deficit here is going to be fairly peculiar. If they can manage to catch up, then I think that'd be a game to watch. But right now, it's looking like Scorch Blaze is going to just be running his show. He's he scored, I want to say, all three times for the Panthers right now. And he's clearly not afraid to keep going at it. Managing to weave it past two, but he is denied by Hunts. But that doesn't matter because you have Young Barcode on the follow-up, getting it into that top left corner. They set it up, the bounce coming out, both of them looking for something. Scorch looks like he's going to assist there, but no, the ball's going to go past, and he's not going to be able to capitalize it on as much as I'm sure he wanted there with that one guy getting it just over. But it doesn't matter because the Panthers are going to be able to push it straight back onto their side. And again, Eclipse and Scorch just pushing up as much as they can. Young Barcode looking... It's definitely interesting. They can't push too far as a three because there's always the off chance that one of them slips by and if they don't have anyone in goal then they just catch themselves out but at the same time scorched and eclipse are just not letting the green knights have that chance they're not letting them push forward enough as i say that i might be proven wrong but it doesn't matter because here we go we see scorch once again going into that aerial he does miss it but eclipse is right behind him to pick it back up and then, if all else fails, Young Barcode is there just to try and set it back and pass it back up to the field to the rest of his team. But at the moment, the goal is left completely defended with Untitled positioning being very interesting here behind the goalkeeper for a moment there. And it does look like he's going to look for something, but it doesn't matter because Eclipse, once again, like I'm saying, their positioning is just working out for them right now. 
And with uh, five seconds left on the clock and another goal by the Panthers, I don't think we're going to see a chance for the Green Knights. So I think they just have to take these last se six seconds, think about what they need to change and change it for the next game because they're two points up. And this is, of course, a best of five set. <laughs> Eclipse managing to sneak it past again, and this might actually be a goal with double, no time left on the clock. No, it is going to touch the ground, and that second point is going to go to the KT Panthers. We we saw we saw some interesting things there. Like again, it was the difference in points from the the four three or the three four game on the side of the Panthers to now the 4-0 the, the game, again on the side of the Panthers, I think maybe the Green Knights are kind of letting that first loss get to them, and I want to see them take a breath, regroup, and play again, because the first game was so even that I, I really do think they could take a few points here and give the Panthers a run for their money. And we'll be right back in just a little bit as we get into this next game. Alright, and now we're going to be going into the third match of this five-round series with the Panthers against the Green Knights. And the Panthers are currently two points up, which is interesting in the sense that we might not be able to see a fourth or fifth game. And to be honest, with both, uh, both of these teams played during the first game, I would like to see the Green Knights managing to win out this game and play a bit more. Because I do think these teams are fairly even matched when it comes to their overall skill level. I think the communication right now, though, is shining on the side of the Panthers. Scorch Blaze just pushing up, like, just pushing up with the help of Eclipse. And we are going to see almost a repeat of the last game. If they aren't managing to stop these two from just completely roll, like, rolling over them and demanding their side of the field, then we're not going to be able to see much of a game. With Untitled trying to push Scorch Blaze away from the ball, though, that was an interesting tactic by completely denying him the ability to turn left. And we do see a setup on a goal here. They're not going to be able to get it as Young Barcode manages to push it just a bit too hard over the, over the goal. And Untitled running down the field, looking to set up for something. Is he going to have the follow-up that he's been lacking? That one guy is ready and Hunts does look like they're ready. But if they mess up here, which they have managed to, as the Panthers are able to push, nobody is there to defend the goal. Eclipse and Scorched Earth are not, want, oh sorry, Scorched Blaze not wanting to step on each other's toes and neither of them hit the ball, which does cost them that three goal that they just managed to like almost capitalize on but it doesn't matter because they might be able to get this off now though they're not going to be able to have untitled hitting the ball off and just knocking the trajectory away again we're seeing it in this corner just trying to play around it untitled getting it the ball into the air but nobody on the side of the green knights is going to be prepared to just just follow up there's no follow-up coming on from the side of the green knights the setups are there Untitled once again, getting the ball into the air on that center of the field, but it's not going to be able to be found by or connected by either of his teammates as Eclipse. And instead of Scorched here, we're going to see Young Barcode pushing up with him, but he quickly retreats as they realize that they might try and lose the ball. Young Barcode and Eclipse. Young Barcode and Eclipse are playing in such a way that when one of them pushes, the other one defends. But if one of them goes to follow up on a corner, one will retreat even if Scorch is ready to play aggressively and that clear communication is coming out and we're seeing it over and over again this happened the last round but we didn't see it too much the first round which is I think the change here maybe isn't so much the Green Knights need to communicate more but maybe it's so the Panthers are starting to 
they saw their mistakes on the foot on the first three goals that they had let get through their goal and now they're not taking any chances but the game this time is much closer as it's still nil nil with two minutes left on the clock this time around on the last two matches we were seeing at least like four goals being scored on like a total by both teams Eclipse and Young Barcode pushing up there. It does look like there's going to be able to, to set it up, but he's going to miss it with Eclipse looking and once again not being able to find it. It's interesting as the goal on the side of the Panthers has been left open, but Young Barcode just managing to save it there. A fantastic show of boost management there as he didn't run out until just as he hit the ball. Young Barcode sitting in that goal, not letting the Green Knights anywhere near those two posts. As the three of them actually push up now, playing fairly aggressively. They know they need to score to be able to take this series. And maybe it, it, there's, there's a slight thrill or excitement there. But you can see the aggression in their playstyle becoming more and more evident as Eclipse gets it set up into the center of the screen. He's going to try and tap it one more time to set it up for Scorch, but he's going to miss it running out of boost. And a good attempt, but we're not going to be able to see it perfected right now with young barcode pushing forward this might be the first game in this in this last two series that we're going to see going into overtime the ball gets very close untitled though not managing to time it but it doesn't matter because young barcode would have been there anyway hunters getting exploded there going down being demolished and that of course causes a reset timer but it does give the side of the Panthers, uh, that one-man advantage for a short amount of time, which can be extremely useful in a game of setting up and defending. 19 seconds left on the clock. Tenta, yeah, the countdown starts. Both teams now are going to be looking for whatever they can. They don't want it to go into overtime. But it looks like, unless we're able to see a goal coming out from the side of the Green Knights here, it is going to go into overtime. So, of course, overtime can go on for as long as it wants. As long as one person scores, the game's over. And we are going to see almost immediately the side of the Green Knights playing very aggressively, managing to get that kickoff into the side of the Panthers, up onto that court. The corner being played by Untitled. The setup is going to come out. Are they going to see any follow-up, though? It doesn't matter. As Barcode managing to just cancel it out. And he's been doing that over and over again. The Green Knights look for something, and Barcode is on top of it. But we're going to see pretty much the same setup coming out from the side of the Panthers. Eclipse going for that little hit, and Scorch Blaze manages to get it in, and that's the set going to KT Panthers. And that was a much closer game. And we're going to see GGs being called by both teams there. And those were good games. Those were those were close. The first, oh, and the first and last game there were extremely close and I'm glad to see the Panthers coming back with a victory right after their loss to the uh, the Centaurs Woodstock Academy Centaurs and that game was that was good and that was that, that that's gonna conclude the today's broadcast and again we broadcast multiple games of over the course of the EGFH we have Rocket League on Tuesdays at 3 EST. We have League of Legends on Wednesdays at 3 EST. And on Thursday, we, of course, have Overwatch. So come broadcast, support your schools, support your teams. And my name's Navik. You can find me on Twitter at Cavendignan, as it says in the stream. And it's been an absolute pleasure casting for you all.